What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to Team Swartz and in today's video I'm going to break down to you what to bring or pack for Army Basic Training in 2021 moving forward with or without Rona. Excuse me, Battle. One, one, one quick thing, all right? Whatever he's saying, listen to him. This is hands down the best video on what to pack for basic training. You will not need another video than this here video because you don't want to be this or like this trainee at Army Basic Training because you will have a hard day, guaranteed. Two scoops. You heard him. Make sure that you check out this video in its entirety because I give you insights and tips on what to bring and the why behind them. What's up everybody? Welcome back here to Team Swartz and if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Here I post a ton of Army Basic training tips, recruiting, and other Army related videos to include going live weekly to address your most desired questions and concerns, typically on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, I have over 16 years as a full-time recruiter and part-time drill sergeant here with the New York Army National Guard by day. And on my free time and on weekends, I come here to create content for you to help you make a well-informed decision on joining the Army and you know, insights on the enlistment process in the Army as a whole to include getting yourself ready both mentally and physically for Army basic training. And without further ado, this video is gonna break down what you need to wear on the day that you ship out to basic training and the minimum items that you should have on your person to ship out to basic training, like the bare minimum. Then I have your basic essentials of what I feel you should still bring with you regardless that will fit in a cinch bag or a book bag, which will be a backpack no bigger than this here, all right? No bigger than this, I, I, I promise you. You will be in for a bad day at basic training. As previously described and shown earlier, do not bring a luggage on wheels or anything remotely close to this, no matter the size. Because when you get to basic training, you're gonna get two of these bad boys or girls, all right? So the rule of thumb is, the less you bring, the better for you. So heed my warning, do not overpack. Do not take that laundry list that your recruiter is more than likely going to give to you to basic training. I made that mistake and I'm trying to prevent you from making that mistake. All right, so the day that you leave for MEPS, you are gonna have to dress accordingly. You can wear a polo shirt, or a t-shirt, your t-shirt must not be a plain white t-shirt because Mets will view that as an undergarment and not authorized for wear. Or a button down shirt and I highly, highly suggest that you bring a sweater in or a sweatshirt because the airport is going to be cold to include more than likely Mets. You can wear jeans or khakis providing that there are no rips, tears, or holes. Make sure that you are wearing socks with running sneakers. Make sure that you do not ship out to basic training wearing cowboy boots, Timberlands, any type of boots, high heels, open toe shoes, flip flops, what have you, platform shoes, whatever. Leave in basic training wearing running shoes. You may be able to use them at Army Basic Training depending on your drill sergeants and their leadership, okay? You will be forced to buy or purchase specific running shoes pertaining to your type of arch of your foot, whether you have a high arch, a normal arch, or if you are flat footed. If you are flat footed or have special insoles for your feet, bring them with you you will be able to use them at basic training. And if you have specific running shoes because of your type of feet, definitely bring those with you because drill sergeants will allow uh, in that instance to use what you bring with you versus what they will force you to buy. You're like, what do you mean force me to buy? So at reception, I will post a link down in the description for you to go check out so you know what to expect during the reception time, but they're going to give you a cash advance on an Eagle card that will force you to buy personal hygiene products, your running shoes, towels, t-shirts, socks, and underwear, so on and so forth. So definitely go check out that video so you're in the know. Ladies, make sure you're not shipping out in thongs, G-string, see-through, lacy, fancy, seductive underwear. Full coverage underwear, okay? Full coverage, granny panties, okay? <laughs> 
Fellas, make sure that you are not leaving in compression shorts. You must be wearing boxers or briefs with a hole in the front. Additionally, make sure that you are clean shaven the day that you ship out to basic training. I highly suggest that if you look like you are part of a Metallica heavy metal band, males, get your haircut before leaving. Doesn't have to be baldy like this, but get yourself a haircut because you will receive unnecessary attention from your drill sergeant. All training sites at this time have reinstated haircuts at the reception battalion. So if you are in need of a haircut and you cannot afford to get a haircut before leaving, don't worry about it, we'll take care of you. Females, make sure that you're not wearing any weaves, wigs, extension, micro blades, or anything like that to include making sure that your hair is dyed to your natural hair color. Once you graduate from AIT and you go to your first unit of assignment, you then will be able to follow the, the Army Regulation or AR 670-1, which is your military appearance and grooming standards while you're in the United States Army. No fake nails, no tips, no gel, no powder nail, whatever you want to call it, okay? To include no nail polish. Natural nails, ladies. Natural nails. Additionally, males and females remove all piercings, ears, tongue, nose, belly button, nipples, down the uh, other region. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got to go. No jewelry. Leave your rings at home. Leave your earrings at home. Leave your necklaces at home. You can wear a religious medallion that you can fit onto your ID tags, AKA dog tags. The only authorized piece of jewelry that you may wear at Army Basic Training is your wedding band for you married folks, okay? So with that being said, heed my warning. Throughout Army Basic Training and AIT, if and when you are conducting various physical activities, you are posing the risk of getting your ring caught on something and literally peeling your skin completely off of your finger. It's rare, but it happens, and I would not <laughs> wish this upon my worst enemy. So with that being said, I highly suggest and implore you to go online, maybe check out Amazon, you'll probably find cheaper versions there. Get yourself a silicone slash rubber wedding band in lieu of your normal, typical wedding band, or just don't wear it at all, okay? But get yourself a rubber ring and you will thank me later and <laughs> it's not worth it, all right? Safety first. Whatever you decide to wear the day that you ship out the basic chain, just make sure that from the waist down, you are not wearing athletic wear. No sports shorts, no mesh shorts, no loose shorts, no, if it looks like sports pants or wind pants or what have you, do not wear it. It is not authorized at MEPS. Ladies, do not wear tights, jeggings, spanks, what have you. No tight revealing pants, okay? If you do, make sure you're wearing shorts over top of them, but just don't wear them. Just wear jeans or khakis just to make it easier for you. The minimum packing list that you must have on you in person to ship out to Army Basic Training is a valid non-expired state identification ID card or a non-expired US passport, okay? or a foreign passport. But if you have a foreign passport, which means it leads me that you must ship out to Army Basic Training with your original physical copy of your I-551 green card, if applicable. The next document you must have with you on person is your original social security card. No ifs and or buts, you will ship out with your original social security card. That is the policy that MEPS has at time of shipping out to basic training or OSUT. With that being said, on a case-by-case -case basis, a guidance counselor can print out a copy of your social security card and stamp it certified true copy because they are, by policy, required to look and see and verify by looking at your original documents at time of enlistment or your time of contracting. So in lieu of your original social security card, you can ship out with that. However, comma, if you lose your social security card, you must go to the social security office and reapply for a replacement social security card and notify your recruiter as soon as possible. This could be a showstopper and prevent you from shipping out the training. You also must bring your debit card and have the ability to access your funds at training. Also, do not bring anything more than $50 because I don't want you to fall victim to five finger discount. The next part of this packing list is optional, all right? So this video, as previously described, is to serve during the Rona and post Rona from here on out 2021. 
and forever be the only video you will ever need to watch. So if you have received your first and or your final vaccination for the Rona, be sure to bring your vaccination card. If you are still due your second dose, they will provide it to you at the basic training site. As of this recording in July of 2021, the COVID vaccine is optional. It is not mandatory yet, but during a recent Facebook virtual town hall with either Fort Sill or Fort Jackson, I'll post the link down below for you to peep at it yourself, but they are projecting that the FDA is going to stamp the approval for the vaccine sometime this summer. So the Army is at this time in preparation for and in anticipation that the FDA is stamping the vaccine approved to start dishing out mandatory Rona vaccines beginning as early as September of 2021, but that is subject to change. So although the training sites will be providing one face mask per day, uh, these things are very flimsy and will break, okay? I highly suggest that you bring two to five hand washable face masks. Just make sure that they are all solid in color, all right? No logos, anything like that. If they have a logo, right? Because this would not be authorized, all right? This would not be authorized. Your logo must be subdued or in color like so, all right? So make sure it's solid in color. It could be black, brown, green, white, blue, what have you. It has to be of a solid color. I suggest, strongly encourage you to get all black masks or green or brown. Any other color, whatever. If you wear a white face mask, it literally looks like you're walking around with a diaper on your face. Just my personal opinion. You can also get yourself a gator like this, all right, but solid in color. This is just something that we give our train, uh, recruits who sign up for the Army National Guard. This would be perfect for the winter time because it would also serve as a purpose of keeping your neck warm. <laughs> for those of you uh, who, who have gone to training in the, in the winter will attest that this is uh, money right here. But with that being said, it's essentially a tube of cloth that you slide up over your head like so, and then you pull up over your face just like so. You can purchase those at the troop exchange that will match your OCPs, your army uniform. Black will also be authorized, but follow the directions of your Joe Sardins. I also suggest that you bring two to five sandwich size Ziploc bags like so to include two to five one gallon Ziploc bags that you, you will use throughout basic training to help keep certain things dry. So for example, your extra uh, face mask that you will carry in your pocket in the event that your current face mask gets wet through sweat, rain, or what have you. You can swap it out with this, okay? Most prescriptions are not authorized while you're Army Basic Training with the exception of birth control. If you are prescribed birth control from your doctor, bring your prescription with you and they will confiscate whatever you bring with you, but as long as you have your prescription, they'll reissue it to you through their army pharmacy, which then your drill sergeants will keep it in their control at the barracks. If you're gonna wear your own chain, make sure that it is no thicker than this chain here by regulation. If it is thicker than this chain here, you are not gonna be authorized to wear that chain with you in uniform, okay? I suggest that you just get yourself a, whether it's a cross, a Jewish star, what have you, and just put it on with your ID tag. Also, do not bring any cologne or perfume with you to basic training because it will not be authorized. You will not wear it and they will confiscate it regardless of the price, whether it's $100, $200 a bottle, or $50 or $20 a bottle. They don't care. It will go into the trash. So as previously described, everything should fit in a backpack so that it will serve as a carry-on bag, okay? You do not wanna have to check something in because if you get to your final destination and for some reason your bag gets lost, it's gonna be extremely difficult for that bag to find you at the reception battalion or even at basic training if it takes a really long time to get to you because you're only gonna be at reception for three to five business days. And it's gonna be that much harder to track you down. So this will serve as your basic essential packing list, what I still feel that you should bring with you to basic training. At minimum, strongly suggest that you bring yourself a stick of deodorant. Make sure that it is a solid, not a gel, not an aerosol spray on can, or a roll on, it's gotta be a solid. If by your culture or personal choice that you do not wear deodorant, you're gonna wear it because you are not gonna stink up our barracks and trust me, your battle buddy who is not accustomed to your body odor does not appreciate your scent. Use deodorant, you will use it whether you want to or not. Because you are preparing yourself a uh, carry on bag, make sure that whatever you pack with you, whether it's 
toothpaste, travel size toothpaste like so, right? Make sure that it, it, it is less than three to five ounces, okay? So a travel size toothpaste will be suffice. You don't have to bring your normal toothbrush, but you get one like this, right? That you can fold away. It's got an enclosed case or just put your toothbrush in a toothbrush case and you are good to go. You can purchase these at the Troop Exchange. Whatever I'm telling you in this packing list is just to get you to the point where you go to the Troop Exchange store to purchase these items. Ladies and gals, all you need to bring with you is literally a bar of soap, stick it into a Ziploc bag like this, or a soap dish, and you are good to go. You can purchase these at the Troop Exchange, but those first day or two while you're there, before you get to the Troop Exchange, you still need to wash your rear end. Do not be a dirty mother flower. Make sure you shower, because we will make sure, and your body bodies will be sure to tell the Joe Sirens that you are not showering. Females, if you must bring conditioner and shampoo, do not bring a big bottle. Again, this is going on your carry-on, so get yourself one of these three to five ounce uh, bottles that you're gonna place it in there and make this last for that first week while you are there. Do not bother bringing tweezers. You're not gonna be able to tweeze your eyebrows or anything like that. You're not gonna be on fleek for the next 10 weeks. You are gonna look like <laughs> a bush. Ladies and gents, make sure that whatever razor you bring with you to basic training, make sure that they are disposable cartridges or make sure that the entire razor is disposable, okay? Do not bring a straight edge razor like this or a double edge safety razor like grandpa used to shave when you were younger, okay? They are not authorized. Only these disposable razors will be authorized. Make sure that if you're going to shave with shaving cream that it is in a small travel size, less than three ounces like this can here. You can use a bar of soap to lather it on your face and to shave there, okay? Make sure that you bring a pair of flip-flops for the shower, okay? Just because you get athlete's foot does not make you an athlete. That is disgusting. Do not let your bare feet touch the shower floors or the bathroom floors, okay? It is disgusting. If you don't know what athlete's foot, Google it. It is some nasty stuff. It'll bubble up, puss up, peel off, and it could get quite painful, all right? Just, <laughs> that does not define you as an athlete. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna leave it right there. You will purchase those in black at the Troop Exchange store, but this is just to get you there, okay? Because you're not gonna go to the Troop Exchange store immediately when you get there. Also, bring a pair of nail clippers, but, <clears throat> Do, if you come with a nail clipper that has this here blade or nail file, break that off. That is not authorized. Only the nail clippers. This is fine, but break this here nail file off. It is not allowed. And during the Rona era, make sure that you bring a, uh, a small, less than two, three ounces of hand sanitizer. I also suggest that you ship out with two locks. One for your wall locker, which is either going to be a combination lock or a key lock. I also suggest that you bring with you a traveler's lock for like a luggage lock that you will put on the main compartment of your backpack to prevent five finger discount while you're army basic training. I also suggest that you bring yourself a hand towel just like this, doesn't have to be that big, maybe slightly bigger, right? Just to be able to dry yourself off. You don't need anything to cover up your private parts because when you go to reception and you take showers, more than likely they're gonna be the old barracks and you're gonna be showering in a big open room with a bunch of shower heads everywhere. Again, <laughs> eyes up, all right? Just bring this to dry yourself off and that's it. Again, everything is gonna fit in a small backpack. So that concludes the Bare Essentials basic packing list that I strongly suggest that you bring with you regardless. Yes, you'll see people in the comments that you don't have to leave with anything other than your documents and I support it, I, I agree. Absolutely you can, but that is the minimum of what I suggest to bring with you because it's gonna take a few days before you get to the Troop Exchange store to be able to purchase those items that you are going to need. All right, so the next set of items are just suggested items, the insights and the why behind it. You do not need to bring any of these because these all can be purchased at the Troop Exchange store. Well, most of it. Bring yourself a notebook for when you write and send letters home, okay? On the inside of your cover, I want you to write down all the names and addresses to the people that you're gonna mail letters to because you're not gonna have access to your cell phone. Your cell phone is gonna get locked up and the Joe Sirens will give them out if and when they feel that you've earned the privilege to call home. But it is a privilege, not a right, so inform your family that you may or may not have access to your phone. And if you do have access 
to your phone. You may not even have signal or strong signal. Additionally, get yourself a pocket notebook that you can put in your pocket for when the drill sergeants put things out during the day and your, your memory's not that great, you're gonna have to write things down. If you do have this type of a, a notebook, right, bring two to three black ink pens, preferably ballpoint ink because it will last longer on the paper if it gets wet. Gel ink will just wash away and act like it never even existed. Kind of like invisible ink. I also suggest that you bring a box of envelopes and put the stamps on each and every single envelope. I suggest that you write down the names and addresses pre-filled out on each envelope so that will be one less step for you to be able to mail the, uh, the letter home. The reason being is the first few days to the first week to two weeks of basic training, you're going to be so mentally and physically exhausted and already having that step done, all you got to do is just quickly write something up and send it home. Additionally, pick a designated person, one person that you're going to at minimum send a letter out to that, that can disseminate your mailing address, all right? That way, you're not sending like 20 letters. You can, at, at minimum, just send one quick letter to that one person and everyone knows that that one person is a designated person and they will and can and obtain your mailing address for basic training because you getting letters is gonna make you feel so much better. What I would also do is, while you're at the reception battalion, have your bank account number, your routing number, and the name of the bank and address written down on a piece of paper, fold it up and put it inside your wallet. So that way in the event for some odd reason, if for some reason your shipper's packet does not have the SF 1199 direct deposit form, at least you have the information to be able to do so at the finance office during your reception process. Additionally, bring a watch with you. Do not bring a smartwatch like this Garmin, an Apple watch or anything like that. Bring yourself a cheap watch that you can get from Walmart, Target for like 10 or 20 bucks. It could be a G-Shock, what have you, but understand that it's gonna get scratched, it's gonna get damaged, it's gonna get dusty, dirty, what have you. So make sure that whatever watch you're getting, it's all black. It could be OD green or anything like that later on, but for basic training, it's gotta be all black, okay? It just needs to be able to have the ability to do two things, to tell time and to set the alarm to wake you up earlier because as time goes on in basic training, you're gonna realize that it's gonna take you to wake up earlier to get everything done before first formation at 0600 or earlier, depending on what's going on for the day. Not only are you bringing your cell phone and its charger, but get yourself a power bank like this, all right? In the barracks, there are not many outlets and there are uh, at least 60 trainees sharing the same barracks with about eight outlets. So get yourself this that you will put with your cell phone that will get stored with the drill sergeant so when they give out your phones, right, you can use this power bank to charge up your phone while you are calling and talking to somebody back home, whether it's your friends or your family. This here will be a lifesaver for you. Additionally, leave your wireless headphones at home, all right? These are, are gonna be dead by the time you go to use them. You're not gonna have time or the ability or have the outlets to be able to recharge it to be able to use it. Many of us like to FaceTime or video chat with our loved ones, which is great. Signal might not be so great, so you might have to make a, a regular phone call because you might not have a strong enough signal to be able to video chat back home. So the headphones that I am suggesting for you to bring are the ones with the wires, okay? Because if you FaceTime without headphones, it, you're not gonna be able to hear the person because you're gonna have 59 other trainees talking loudly to their family, crying, you know, having a great time, laughing, what have you, and it's gonna be easier for you to hear them and them to hear you if you wear those headphones. The only book that you're gonna be authorized to bring with you to basic training is your holy book, whether it's the Holy Bible, the Quran, or the equivalent, whatever your religion is, you can bring your Bible with you, or they will give you a New Testament Bible while you're at basic training or even at MEPS before you finally ship out. All right, for females, okay? Make sure you bring some bobby pins and a brush with you to include hair ties. Bring a bunch of hair ties that are at your hair color. It cannot be of a different hair color. As close to your hair color as possible, whether it's light brown, dark brown, black, dirty blonde-ish color, whatever, I'm colorblind, but choose something that matches and complements your hair color. I also suggest that you bring at least one or two boxes or packages of either pads or tampons. 
based on the feedback from the females, they say that tampons are better than the pads because yes, you will have access to do your thing in the latrine, AKA bathroom, but pads tend to overflow and you might not get to the uh, latrine fast enough and they just simply said that tampons are just more convenient for uh, female counterparts, okay? Additionally, you may or may not get your time of the month or TTOTM, all right, which is that time of the month or your menstrual cycle. Due to the high levels of stress that you will be enduring throughout basic training, you may not even get your menstrual cycle or it may prompt you to get your menstrual cycle. So stick one or two of these in your pocket along with some feminine wipes. Put the feminine wipes on one calf because so on, your, on your OCPs at the bottom, you have small pockets. So you can put your feminine wipes on one side and your tampons or your pads on the opposite side. So that way, if you ever come down with it while you're outside training or whatnot, or if your battle buddy comes down with it and they're unprepared and they don't have anything, you're able to help out your battle. Additionally, when experiencing TTOTM, if you're that typical female that gets uh, you know super hard and heavy cramps and experience a lot of pain to the point where you're like lounged up on the couch, calling out of work and or school, and taking Midol and other pain relieving uh, supplements or over the counter medications or what have you, you're not gonna have access to pain relievers while at Army Basic Training or AIT. You're not gonna be able to take the day off to deal with your cramps or pain that you may be sustaining throughout your TTOTM. With that being said, you will have to go on sick call to acquire said pain relievers, whether it's ibuprofen or Tylenol or whatever the equivalent that the doctor will give to you when you go on sick call. This is hashtag no days off during your initial entry training. So do not expect that you're just gonna be lying around in your bunk for the rest of the day because you're experiencing cramps. So with that being said, if you also go on sick call, understand this is for anybody who goes on sick call for that matter, if you, miss a basic training requirement that morning while at sick call and you cannot make it up throughout the rest of your basic training time with the current company that you're with, you're risking the, the ability of being recycled to an earlier phase to make up that training that you missed that is a basic training requirement. So heed my warning. Also, make sure, I'm, I'm suggesting that, I know it's out of your pocket, I mean you're gonna get cash advance, you will be able to buy appropriate sports bras at the troop exchange that are all black or whatever the authorized color is at that time whether it's all black all white or all tan however there from my understanding from what the feedback i get from my female trainees that come back from training that are fully mos qualified now is that they wished that they had purchased sports bras before leaving and i suggest based on their input that you bring two to five sports bras from wherever you want to go to buy them that are more supportive of better quality and cheaper okay they're not cheap at the at the troop exchange store for some reason they're not cheap and they're not even that great of a quality just make sure that it is solid black solid tan or solid white no logos or different matching colors if they do have logos like this mask here if you notice you got the under armor logo it just has to be a subdued color okay or a subdued logo if it's a white logo let's say it's uh, under armor or like champs or something like that just take a black permanent marker if it's black uh black fabric just black it out with a permanent marker which leads me in to bringing a permanent marker to be able to mark your personal belongings your underwear your socks your t-shirts your your uniforms your boots your sneakers your flip-flops Mark anything that is personally yours. Anything that you get issued to you from the CIF, the Centralized Issuing Facility, like your helmet, your rucksack, your assault pack, and all the other equipment that you're gonna need to complete basic training. Do not put your name on there. But for anything that's personally yours, your notebook, your personal hygiene kit, everything, right? To include your towels and your washcloths, your, your laundry bag, put your last name and last four of your social. You'll thank me later, trust me you will possibly fall victim to five finger discount. And we got some dirty mother flowers that will steal even your underwear. <laughs> the day that you ship out to basic training, only bring the clothes that you are currently wearing. I am suggesting that you bring two to three extra t-shirts, two to three extra pairs of socks and underwear, and that's it. Do not bring any more pairs of pants, long sleeve shirts or sweaters or what have you, okay? 
I will talk about a package that you will prepack to have your family mail to you once you get to AIT. And many of you will actually lose a lot of weight in army basic training or tone up and your body will change, thus prompting you to buy better fitting clothes when you're done, which is a Good problem to have if you ask me. Do not bring a purse or a genuine leather uh, wallet or anything fancy or expensive. Get yourself either a Velcro wallet like so. Um, this one's pretty cool, right? Both of these you can purchase at like the Troop Exchange store or something like that. But the one with here you can stuff in here and use it as a regular wallet or you can wear it around your neck like this and stuff it inside your blouse, okay? That way you won't lose it. So if you have your key for your lock because you have a key lock you can stick it right in here right and and store it there give your spare key to your drill sergeant in the event that you lose your key they'll have access to your wall locker if not they're gonna get the bolt cutters have to cut it off and you have to purchase at some point a new lock which you may or may not get to in a timely fashion and possibly fall victim to five finger discount again or caught with an unsecured wall locker and if that happens everything gets tossed i mean everything and expect for wall lockers to be unsecure or your bunks not to be made properly so everything's gonna get tossed across the barracks so it's a big open bay with a bunch of bunk beds and everything and everything's gonna get tossed so if you don't get that permanent marker and mark your personal belongings it's gonna be tough to find your belongings because everyone's gonna have the same exact thing as you but if you were smart you listen to me you're watching the video and you got your permanent marker and you wrote down your last name in the last four you're welcome. Let's do some hero stuff. I suggest that if you have kids or family members that you are fond of, if you wanna bring some photos with you, I highly suggest that you laminate them and that they are wallet size to keep inside your wallet. And you can take out those photos whenever you're feeling down and you need some motivation and inspiration and to remind you of your why, of why you're there. You are a freaking warrior. Remember that you are someone to be reckoned with and you are stronger than you think. So push through the pain, push through the issues that you're going through right now. Pull up your diaper and drive on. Finish it, follow through, graduate, and you will be good to go. All right, so my ladies who have ethnic hair, they do sell uh, ethnic products for like hair gels and moisturizers for your hair and stuff like that at the Troop Exchange, but it may not be the type of brand that works best for your hair or preferred. So yes, they will have things for you, but if you wanna bring a small tube or tub that's less than three to five ounces, you can bring that with you and or you can have it mailed to you at the basic training site. Once you are established and you have a mailing address, your family can send a care package including that item to you. If you are gonna have uh, hand lotion or anything like that, again, when you're shipping out, it's gotta be less than three to five ounces, but if you have it mailed to you from home or if you purchase it there, it has to be the generic scent. It cannot be like super fruity or anything crazy like that. It's gotta be the generic hand lotion, okay? All right, males, fellas, listen up. If this is your first time shaving, I don't care if you got one hair or three hairs on your chinny chin chin, you will shave every single day. And if you don't know how to shave, learn before going. I will, if, if you want me to do a tutorial, and let me know in the comment section. But with that being said, People who are subjected to bumps, more so uh, 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 of persons with ethnic skin, right? You get a lot of bumps under here. Perfectly fine, it is expected. However, you're gonna need to get what we call a shaving profile. So if you experience bumps, right? And you don't wanna shave because of that, because you will be expected to shave every single morning, not the night before, it, you, you're best off shaving that morning because if we see five o'clock shadow and it's not even noontime yet, we're gonna assume that you shaved the night prior and that is the wrong answer. You have to shave every day in the morning when you wake up. With that being said, if you are experiencing bumps, it is a possibility that you can get a shaving profile. You're gonna have to wait until you get bumps and that you're cutting yourself basically and make sure that your drill sergeant sees you blotting off the, uh, the bloody spots on your, on your neck and eventually you're gonna go on what we call sick call and you're gonna sit down with a doctor. The doctor's gonna assess your bumps in your skin and ask you some engaging questions to verify what type of shaving profile that they're going to give to you. Whether it's every two or three days you shave or you use electric razor or um, uh, sh shaving cream that you know makes your hair fall off type of thing and there's no actual shaving, what have you. 
if and when you do get a shaven profile, make sure that you have it on you at all times. Put it in a Ziploc bag like this, stuff it in your pocket, and have it on you at all times. Because if a Joe Sergeant approaches you and asks you if you have a shaving profile and you say yes, and you're like, I don't have it on me, Joe Sergeant. Wrong answer. Guess what? You're gonna go in there and you're gonna go shave because you do not have your shaving profile. So to help prevent bumps, research ways on how to shave based on your skin, your type of hair, hair growth, find out like which direction the hair is growing so you know how to shave with the grain and sideways, right? It's a method to the madness. There are plenty of people with ethnic skin or what have you that can shave without creating bumps. Learn how to shave properly before leaving. Another thing is while you're at the Troop Exchange store, if your Joe aren't let you to get it, but these Dr. Scholl's um, moleskins will be a lifesaver for the days that you go on your ruck marches throughout basic training. So if you are subjected to blisters, these things are a godsend. Definitely worth every penny. Also, another basic training hack or military hack is if you know you're going on a ruck march or it's super hot out and you're sweating between the legs and you're chafing a lot, get this here glide, okay? This body glide, you're gonna wipe in between your legs where the friction is, right? Amazing, you will not get uh, a heat rash in between your thighs. This is for males and females, okay? If you are subjected to getting a heat rash in between your legs where the friction is when you're marching for a long time, Right? That is a cut, like that hands down, the best product you can ever get yourself. All right, so now, what are some items not to bring to Army Basic Training? Do not bring a pocket knife, a fixed blade, an all-in-one tool, any of that stuff it is not authorized at basic training. In fact, don't even get any of that stuff until you get to your first unit of assignment. These are unauthorized items at Army Basic Training and AIT. If you wear glasses or wear contacts, do not bother bringing your contacts. You will not be able to use your contacts at all, all throughout Army Basic Training. You can have them mailed to you when you get to AIT, which, in a, which I'll explain in a second, but they're not authorized for Army Basic Training. Whatever glasses you do bring with you to Basic Training, you will receive a thorough, extensive eye exam to include additional tests, and you will be provided to you basic issue glasses. We call these, back in my day, uh, BCGs, birth control glasses, because you ain't getting none <laughs> while wearing these glasses. I mean, they're pretty much in nowadays, but back then, not so much, but yeah. They're actually, they're actually the, the, the new issued glasses are actually better looking than these. So no drugs, no supplements, no over-the-counter medication, unless provided by your doctor. And again, bring your prescription with you and they will reissue it to you from the Army's pharmacy. They will not trust what it is that you bring there, okay? So no protein shakes, no creatine, no pre-workout, no multivitamins, nothing. Do not even bother bringing them because they're not authorized for basic training or AIT. All right, so during basic training, you are not going to bring a uh, laptop or a tablet. You can have that stuff mailed to you. I'll go over that in a second. But while your stuff is at basic training, you're not going to have access to it and it's going to be stored into a closet. We will be tossing bags. Bags will be stacked on top of your bag and I don't want it to get damaged. So don't bring it with you, which leads me into items that I want you to prepack in a box with bubble wrap and all that good stuff that you're going to have mailed to you once you get to your AIT your advanced individual training, right? Once you get your rock solid mailing address. You can take your laptop, right? And your tablet, bubble wrap that mother flower and put it in a box, okay? Take your contacts that you normally specifically wear on a day-to-day -day basis. You will be authorized to wear them at AIT as long as you're not in the field. Do not wear them while you're in the field. You'll wear your glasses when you're out in the field, these every day while you're going to class for your MOS. And if you don't anticipate on losing a lot of weight or what have you, you can pack one to two outfits that you will also throw into that box so that you can receive that care package once you're at AIT. That way you can pack light to basic training and not risk damaging your laptop and or tablet. So if you made it this far into the video, you are my real ride or die MVP player of the Team Swartz. You are now a Team Swartz squad member. So do me a favor, if you made it this far into the video, drop a hashtag Team Swartz down in the comment section. I just want you to know that I truly appreciate you making it all the way to this point in the video. Like this video, smash it if that's something you're into and, and, I'll see you in the next video. Hell yeah! Hold up!
wait a minute, like this video and follow me on social. And while you're at it, go ahead and uh, check out one of my other videos right over here. Just, just, just pick one. They're pretty cool. I mean, I liked it. I mean, I mean, I was in it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I teach you something. Just, just saying.